Hey guys, welcome back to Med School Moose. This is going to be USMLE Step 1 Buzzwords Part 6. I know it's been a little while since I made a video for this series, but I wanted to go ahead and add another part to it. So let's just go ahead and get started with the buzzwords. The first one is going to be calf pseudohypertrophy, and if you see that on the exam, I want you to think about muscular dystrophy. Um, more particularly, I want you to be thinking about Duchenne muscular dystrophy, because that's the most common association with calf pseudohypertrophy. Caudate degeneration, if you see that, you should be thinking about Huntington disease. Continuous machine-like heart murmur, most medical students know this one by heart, it's PDA, patent ductus arteriosus. If you see ptosis, anhydrosis, and meiosis, a common triad, you want to automatically be thinking about Horner syndrome. Clenched fists with overlapping fingers, this is going to be Edwards syndrome, remember this is trisomy 18. Hyperorality, which is a tendency to put objects in the mouth or examine objects using the mouth. If you see that on the exam, you should be thinking about Kluver Busey syndrome. Red urine in the morning, if that's in one of the vignettes, it's probably associated with paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. Webbed neck, also a pretty common one that I've seen on the exam a lot. You want to associate that with Turner syndrome. Cystic hygroma, you're also going to associate with Turner syndrome. Remember, that's 45XO. Uh, they only have, females only have the one X chromosome. And just for reference, a cystic hygroma is a fluid-filled sac that causes blockages of the lymphatic system. It commonly occurs in the neck. In the clinical vignette, you'll probably see it occurring in the neck of a female patient. Um, but just keep in mind that it doesn't have to just be the neck. So cystic hygroma, you want to be thinking about Turner syndrome. Crescendo, decrescendo murmur, another one that most medical students know automatically. This is associated with aortic stenosis. And the way that I remember this is a little bit silly, but I think of a crescendo, decrescendo. I think about a symphony, AS, a symphony, aortic stenosis. If that helps you, good. If it doesn't, let's just keep moving. <laughs> recurrent epistaxis. If you see a patient that has recurrent epistaxis in a question, you want to be thinking about Osler, Weber, Rendu syndrome. This can also be called hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia. Bamboo spine, if you see this description, or more commonly if you see an x-ray that looks like it's that bamboo spine appearance, you want to be thinking about ankylosing spondylitis. Boot-shaped heart, if you see this on x-ray or it's described this way, you should associate it with tetralogy of Fallot. And just for reference, that boot shape of the heart occurs due to right ventricular hypertrophy which is one of, the, um, one of the issues with tetralogy of Fallot. An apical lung tumor, really the only association that you're going to see with this is the pancoast tumor, and that can also be associated with Horner syndrome. So remember the ptosis, anhydrosis, and meiosis is associated with pancoast tumor and associated with Horner syndrome. Chocolate cyst, if you see this, it's going to be associated most commonly with endometriosis. A delta wave on EKG, remember this is going to be that kind of slurred upstroke on the QRS complex. If you see that on an EKG, or if they describe that kind of slurring of the QRS complex, you want to associate that with Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. Heterophile antibodies is going to be associated with infectious mononucleosis, mono. Honeycomb lung, if you see that, Probably not going to see an x-ray that'll show that kind of thing because it's a little bit hard to discern. But if you see that description of a kind of honeycombing of the lung, you want to associate it with interstitial pulmonary fibrosis. Large granules in phagocytes. This is going to be associated with Chediak-Higashi syndrome. Onion skin, appearance of the bone. I know I've covered this in the high yield images series. And this is going to be associated with Ewing sarcoma. Rib notching on x-ray is going to be associated mostly with coarctation of the aorta. Thumb sign on neck, neck x-ray, they're probably not going to come out and just say thumb sign, but they'll show you the x-ray of the neck and you'll be able to kind of see that thumb sign. That'll be associated with epiglottitis. Imatinib, this is one of the drugs that you'll see on the exam. Uh, and really the only association to make here is that it's the treatment for chronic myelogenous leukemia. So if you see imatinib, just know it as the treatment for CML. 
Trastuzumab, this is going to be another medication that really only has one use for uh, the purpose of board exams, and that's going to be for the treatment of HER2 positive breast cancer. So trastuzumab, HER2 positive breast cancer. Mifepristone, if you see this on the exam, you should be thinking about how it concerns to a medical abortion. Natalizumab, another monoclonal antibody that really only has one treatment in terms of board fodder, it's going to be for multiple sclerosis. Dantrolene, this is one that most medical students know, it's used as the treatment for malignant hyperthermia. Steeple sign on chest x-ray, again, they're probably not going to come out and say steeple sign, but they'll show you the x-ray and you'll see that kind of steeple or the upward pointing arrow uh, in the neck area, and that's associated with croup. Tennis racket shaped cytoplasmic granules is going to be associated uh, with Burbeck granules, that's the name. Tennis racket shaped cytoplasmic granules are Burbeck granules, and to follow up on that, if you see the description of Burbeck granules or if they just straight up give you the term Burbeck granules, you want to know that that's associated with longer Hans cell histiocytosis. Okay, so that is the end of this uh, Buzzwords video. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to, feel, please feel free to subscribe, uh, leave a comment, a suggestion for a future video, and I'll definitely take it into consideration. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck studying.